Welcome to the Fly Tying Photography Kit Tutorial. The easy way to get the most out of your mobile phone's camera. Loosen the handle and straighten the ball head base. Take the tripod and screw into the base of the ball head. The ring light can be powered from any USB socket or mobile phone charging plug. Open the tripod legs. The ring light is now assembled. Good light is the most important aspect of photography. Without it, a nice clear image would be very difficult to achieve. The best light is, of course, natural daylight, but for the most part, this is very difficult to achieve. We can now create our own controllable light, using the adjustable ring light to illuminate our fly photography. There are five steps to creating a better image. The first step we will look at is settings and how to set up the camera on your phone. The first setting to look at is the format the phone saves the photo file in. The default setting is high efficiency. This format compresses the image and saves memory on the phone, but reduces the quality of the image. Change the setting to most compatible. This will save the image in a JPEG format and will result in a better quality uncompressed image. If you are struggling for memory space on your device, revert to high efficiency to save memory space. To change the setting go to settings, camera, format, most compatible. The second item to change is preserve settings. Each time the phone is switched off it reverts back to the default settings. Here, we can set the camera to remember the settings from the last time we used the camera, which saves time resetting each time you want to take an image. You can also save a favorite filter, should you choose to use one, and choose whether the camera app opens in photo or video mode. To change the setting go to settings, camera, preserve settings, switch on camera mode and others should you choose to do so. The next is to add grid lines to the phone screen. These lines help in composing the image in what is known as the rule of thirds. Whilst the rule of thirds is more commonly used in landscape photography, they can be very useful to use when photographing flies or indeed when composing any close-up image. And just in case you were wondering, the lines only appear on the phone screen and do not appear on the final image. To add the grid lines, go to settings, camera, and then turn on the grid. The final setting is auto HDR. HDR stands for high dynamic range. HDR helps you get great shots in high contrast situations. When using this mode, the phone takes several photos in rapid succession at different exposures and blends them together to bring more highlight and shadow detail to your photos. You can also save a normal single image together with the HDR version by going to settings, camera, keep normal photo. This will give you two versions of the same image. Should you wish to keep only the non HDR version, switch off auto HDR. Next, we will look at composition, for now we will look at positioning of the fly for a sharp image and how the grid lines can be used to assist us with the composition. Let's look at the photo modes to determine the overall composition and look of the image. The oblong shaped photo mode is the default mode on most phones and can be used for longer flies and lures. Where an oblong image is required, this is the mode to use and the image can always be cropped later and is for some phone manufacturers, the only image shape available. iPhones have a square mode option. The square mode is a better option for fly photography. Although it is merely a pre-cropped version of photo mode, it makes composing smaller flies far easier and with minimal further cropping required is an ideal shape for uploading to social media. Should your phone not have a square option, there are apps available for download which give more aspect ratio options. Portrait mode, available from Apple iPhone and other manufacturers, is not recommended for taking images of flies. We are looking for a nice sharp image, and the settings for this mode soften the image, 
and add warm tones to enhance portrait photography. The positioning of the fly is crucial to getting the sharpest image possible from our phone. All lenses have their sharpest area in the center of the lens and by positioning the fly nearest to the center of the image, we will utilize this sweet spot to the fullest. The grid lines you see on your phone screen have divided the screen into thirds. The rule of thirds is one of the fundamental composition principles in photography. It's all about positioning the most important elements offset to create a balanced and harmonious composition. Whilst in landscape photography, the lines are used as mentioned to give the image a more pleasing balance. We can use them as guidelines to allow the fly to be positioned in the center box and when composing the shot, when the fly is allowed to fill the box, we'll leave a third of the screen all around the fly as empty space, thus giving a perfect balance to the image and leaving ample area around to allow the fly room to breathe. Depending on the look of the fly and the way it is facing, we may find it looks more balanced slightly to one side, where we can then use the same principles of utilizing the area where the lines cross to position the main bulk of the fly and leave the fly as if it were, looking into space. Taking images handheld causes motion blur and camera shake, which is the biggest cause of blurred, out-of-focus images. By using the phone holder tripod and the timer mode on your phone's camera, we can totally eliminate any blurring caused to set the timer, simply tap the timer symbol and set the timer to the length required. Usually, 3 to 5 seconds is sufficient. Now we shall look at the focus lock. If you don't set the focus lock, your phone may hunt around the image and focus on something other than the main subject, the fly. Tap the screen in the area you want to focus, the phone will focus on the area selected, and in the case of the iPhone, a yellow box appears. Hold a finger against the screen, inside the yellow box, until the symbol AEAF appears. You have now set the focus lock. AEAF stands for autofocus and auto exposure. To create the best possible image, it's essential that the camera is focusing on your intended subject. So rather than letting the phone decide what to focus on, you should always set the focus point manually. If you just point your phone's camera at a scene and press the shutter button, the camera will decide which part of the scene to focus on. Exposure is essentially the amount of light that falls on the phone sensor. In photography terms, this is determined by what photographers call the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle is the combination of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO of your phone's camera that helps you control the light in your photos. For those of you that want to learn more about the exposure triangle, there are many articles online that explain it in greater depth than is necessary here. We'll look at how we control the exposure in more detail when we show you in practical terms the five steps we have just discussed, when very soon we start to take images of our flies. You may notice that during the video, there is a big difference between the final image and the images shown on the phone screen. This is due to the phone screen and the video camera frame rate being slightly out of sync. Also, mobile phone screens are of a much lower resolution than the resolution of the final image captured by the phone's camera. For the tutorial, we will be using an iPhone 8 from 2017. This will demonstrate the quality of image you can achieve from a middle of the road, slightly older mobile phone. The images from older phones will in most cases be of lower quality, and newer phones will of course generate better quality images. Taking a sharp image and focusing correctly is an area most people struggle with, and quite often it is the phone that is the problem. We will also take a look at an older Samsung J5 from 2015. This phone has a known focus problem, so by using this phone, we can demonstrate how focusing problems can be easily overcome with a few simple steps. Blur and out-of-focus images can also be caused by placing the phone too close to the subject. Every camera's lens 
including the one in your mobile phone, has a minimum focusing distance. That is to say, the closest you can be to the subject and still keep the subject in focus. With modern mobile phones, this is usually around 10 centimeters or 4 inches. You will be able to find the minimum focusing distance for your phone from your manual or online. However, there is a simple way to find it. By using the phone itself, place the fly approximately 10 centimeters from the phone camera lens. With the camera up open and the zoom at its shortest point, tap the screen to allow the camera to focus on the fly. Move the fly toward the camera lens. You will notice the image on the screen becomes very blurry. Start to move the fly away from the lens, tapping the screen to see if the phone will focus. When the camera regains focus, this is the minimum focusing distance. Move the fly centimeter away from the lens to allow the focusing system room to operate. Measure the distance from the phone to the fly. And remember the distance. You should use this distance in every shot you take to ensure you don't get too close to the subject and cause blur in the image. The minimum focusing distance for this phone's camera is 10 centimeters or 4 inches. Every phone is different, some will focus closer, and with some older phones the distance can be up to 30 centimeters or 12 inches. Now we will look at the camera's zoom facility and the difference between optical and digital zoom. And in a nutshell, optical zoom is best. Optical zoom actually increases the size of the image by moving glass elements within the lens to truly zoom in on the subject. Digital zoom merely crops the original image as we zoom in, and then algorithms add pixels to restore data lost in the crop, hence the name digital zoom. Whilst in later phones, most digital zooms do a very good job, and you would be hard-pressed to notice the difference until you get to a higher magnification. The process isn't completely lossless, and there is still a loss of data and quality. In early or cheaper models, however, where the software isn't quite so powerful, this creates blocky, out-of-focus images, which we will see when we look at the Samsung J5. So if your phone has multiple lenses, there is a good chance you may have a telephoto lens, and therefore, optical zoom, and you can use all of the zoom capabilities, without any loss of data, or quality in the image. If you have a phone with a single lens, you will have digital zoom, and if it is an early phone with digital zoom, Forget the zoom altogether and crop the image after taking the shot. We will look at this method later in the tutorial. Some phones have a new hybrid zoom, which combines the images from multiple cameras, static zooms and cropped, digital zoom, together with software to create the zoomed image. Check which zoom your phone has. It could make the difference between a good image or a great one. When using digital zoom on all phones, it is recommended, that zooming is kept to a minimum and never more than around 50% of the camera's capability. If you feel you need to get closer before zooming, you should always ensure your phone is as close as possible to the subject without going past the camera's minimum focusing distance. So, let's take a photo. Using all of the processes we have covered so far to get the best image possible from our phone, we have chosen to photograph this particular fly, as it has multiple contrasting colors, with lots of depth in the wing and hackle layers, and should be a good test for the cameras in the phones we'll be using. With the fly and a background in position, switch on the ring light. To start with, we would suggest using the cool light setting and reducing the brightness down from full power by three clicks. Select the timer symbol and set it to between 3 to 10 seconds. Using the timer, together with the tripod, will totally eliminate any chance of camera shake. Select a mode. We have decided to use the square option. Arrange your composition using the grid lines. You may have to move the fly or the phone or both to achieve this.
Don't forget to keep your fly parallel to the camera lens, this will keep all of the fly within the depth of field. At this stage, we don't know how deep the depth of field is, and at close distances, the depth of field can be very shallow. For now, we are trying to get a sharp image, we will look at more composition ideas in the second video. Now set the focus, exactly as we discussed earlier. With the focus set, we will now look at setting the exposure. By dragging a finger up or down the screen, we can adjust the brightness of the image. When we lock the focus, we also lock the exposure to what the phone's auto system thought were the best settings. By adjusting the brightness, after setting the locks, we can control the exposure of the image. If you set the brightness to the level required before the focus lock, the phone will reset the exposure back to the level the auto system thinks is the correct setting. By adjusting the exposure as seen, the brightness is determined for the whole image. We can however, control the lighting another way, by first setting the exposure lock, and then, by adjusting the power and color of the ring light, we have more control over the lighting. And as we will see in the next video, by using different setups, we can move the light around, to create different looks to the image. And at last, we can take an image, simply lightly touch the capture button, and the timer counts down and takes the image. Let's have a look at the image. And it looks very nice, let's have a look at the unedited image, straight out of the phone. Very nice indeed, a very usable image with lots of sharp detail. Okay, we now know how to take a sharp image, and we hope you have been successful so far. So now let's look at depth of field, and how it affects our images. In this first clip, we set the fly at around 15 centimeters or 6 inches from the phone lens, and took an image exactly as before. Let's have a look at the image. It's very nice. We can see, the hackles are sharp, front to back, and the tail is also quite sharp. Now let's turn the fly, so that it is head-on, at an angle to the lens, and take another image. And on inspection, we can see the tail is losing focus. We'll now turn the fly in the opposite direction, to see what happens. And now, even though the tail is now, at the front of the image, it's still out of focus. Let's take a look at what's going on. Now let's imagine. We have set the fly at 15 centimeters or 6 inches from the lens. Now if you can, look at this image, and think of three, imaginary thin glass panes. One directly in front of the fly, one a short distance behind, and one a short distance in front. When we set the focus lock, the focus locks onto the center pane, or the front of the fly. The two outer panes, are the start and finish of the depth of field, everything within the two outer panes, is in focus, everything outside of these panes, is out of focus, and the further away from the center pane you go, the more out of focus things become. Clear so far? Good. 
Now, if you move the fly, and the imaginary panes towards the lens, the depth of field becomes narrower, as if the panes were squeezing the fly. The further away from the lens you go, the wider the depth of field becomes. And so the distance between the two outer imaginary panes increases. So, at 10 cm from the lens, the depth of field may be less than 2 cm. But at 20 cm from the lens, the depth of field could be as much as 5 cm, and the further you go, the wider the depth of field becomes. Depth of field is also affected by the aperture of the lens, but as the aperture in most mobile phones operate in a very small range, usually around f2 to f2.5, it won't be a factor in our images. In this clip, you can see the tail going in and out of focus as it goes through the depth of field. We were focusing on the front of the fly each time, and with both tilted images we started losing focus, at around 2 cm from the focusing point, or the last two-thirds of the tail, whether the tail was pointing toward or away from us. At a distance of 15 cm from the lens, this gives us a depth of field of approximately 4 cm. Therefore if we wish to keep all of this fly in focus at a tilted angle we would need to focus in the center of the fly or around the hook bend. And we would have to keep the fly at a distance of more than 15 centimeters or 6 inches. Another point to remember is zooming, at least for optical zoom phones, zooming will affect the depth of field also, and high magnification will greatly reduce the depth of field. For digital zoom phones, this isn't a worry, as, as explained earlier, digital zoom is a cropped image of the original image. That has been a very long-winded way of saying, if part of your fly is out of focus, move it away from the lens. However we hope, you now have a better understanding, of why, you need to move your fly. As you will have already guessed, when taking images close to the minimum focusing distance, it is always advisable to keep the fly, as parallel to the lens as possible, to achieve the sharpest overall images. Now, we'll compare zooming to cropping, to see which produces the better image. If you have an optical zoom phone, then zooming is obviously the best choice. As we discussed earlier there is no loss of data when zooming with an optical zoom. This section applies to digital zoom phones, and especially older or cheaper models to show which option produces the least loss of data, and the better image. And we have again, changed the fly. For the first image we will zoom to 50% magnification, which for this phone, the iPhone 8, is two and a half times magnification. You can see the level, on the slider to the right. Set the timer as before, and focus on the middle of the fly and take the image and here is the image for the second image, we will take the image without any zoom And here, is the second image. We crop the second image, to give the same size image as the zoomed version. Let's compare the images side by side. I think you will agree, the zoomed image is far superior, as the phone software has done a good job of restoring the lost data, to give a nice sharp image. But, will zooming in further, on a smaller subject give a different result. We then swapped the fly for a size 12 buzzer and repeated the steps. 
but we zoomed in to around 80% of the phone's zoom capability. And these are the results we got. This time, there is very little in it, but if anything, the zoom image is ever so slightly sharper, which shows that when zooming more than 50% with this phone, it does result in a big loss in image quality. We recommend you try this for yourself, especially if you have an older phone, you may be surprised by the results, as we shall see when we look at the Samsung J5. We shall look at the Samsung J5 in the next tutorial, as it may only be of interest to anyone with an older phone or one with a focusing problem. This concludes the first of our tutorials. We hope you have enjoyed this first tutorial and now have a better understanding of how your phone camera works. The photography kit is designed as a first step into better fly photography. And whilst we can't cover everything about photography here, we hope we have given you a little insight into photography basics. And by following the steps we have shown here, you are now taking sharper images of your flies. Watch the next videos for tips on composition and what to do if your focusing system isn't working correctly.